today we're here to talk about one of the items that uh, was formed by one of the subcommittees from the task force, uh, which is a new program that will be put in place very soon. Uh, it's a rapid evaluation of appropriate placement program, as you can see, working with our friends in law enforcement uh, to ensure that individuals who uh, may unfortunately uh, come in contact with law enforcement because of an issue associated with addiction from opiates uh, not only uh, are, are dealt with at that moment, but get the help that they need afterwards, uh, which is what we truly want to see in the individual that may have an addiction, uh, not become a statistic with regards to an arrest, but become, or for worse, a statistic as it pertains to death and overdoses, but uh, actually gets the assistance they need uh, from professionals and others in the community. As I said, this is a, a program which uh, came about as a result of one of the subcommittees associated uh, with our uh, Erie County Opiate Epidemic task force and it just goes to show the great work that is being put together by the task force as individuals from across the community come together uh, to, uh, to discuss this and come up with ways in which we can end this epidemic. Uh, you're going to be hearing from a few individuals. Uh, of course you'll be hearing from our health commissioner Dr. Gail Burstein. You'll also be hearing from the U.S. Attorney uh, for the Western District of New York, uh, William Pokel. Uh, we've all been working very hard and as well as uh, Dan Ronaldo from the DEA. Uh, on a program that uh, he, in some ways, is uh, spearheaded for this region. Uh, but at this time, I'd like to turn over the, the, the podium to our Health Commissioner, Dr. Gail Burstein, to talk a little bit about how this process came about. And then she'll turn it over to uh, Dan to talk, tell you about the REAP program in general. So, Dr. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, and thank you all for joining us to help us spread the word about our Opioid Prevention Task Force and a very important program in the task force, as the county executive mentioned, the REAP program. So this really comes about from our Opioid Epidemic Task Force, where law enforcement really has a great insight in that addictions is not an undesirable behavior, it is a disease of the brain. And we typically don't incarcerate other individuals that have have other diseases that require medication and so we certainly don't want to incarcerate people who have addiction which is a disease in a brain and they need some type of medication assisted treatment to help them with their addiction so in the law enforcement when they find when people come to them that are um, you know with, through possession or through um, you know minor theft uh, to try to uh, get some money to feed their addiction rather than incarcerating them and not helping them with their disease they will use through the REAP program and through resources uh, through the crisis services hotline that will hopefully be up and running in the next couple months be able to refer those individuals into care rather than incarceration so this is a great program with great insight from our law enforcement partners to really help people who need help to get into care. And hopefully this will get people who have this disease into treatment so they will no longer continue having encounters with law enforcement. So to give more specifics about the program, I want to turn this over to Dan Ronaldo, who is leading the charge. The REAP program is actually modeled after something uh, that was started in Gloucester, Massachusetts called the Gloucester Initiative. In November of 2015, we brought Gloucester Police Chief Leonard Campanello to Buffalo to explain his Gloucester Initiative to us. Um, the meeting was attended by about 150 law enforcement and healthcare professionals. Uh, for three hours, uh, Chief Campanello went through uh, how he started the program, why he started it, and what the eventual uh, outcome based uh, initiatives that he, he wanted to start. So we decided we were going to start something here in Erie County, as Commissioner uh, Burstein said. It's called REAP. Uh, what we have now are 12 law enforcement agencies in Erie County and one in Niagara County that have agreed to participate in the program. We're here today to uh, announce the program, not only announce the program, but uh, to ask for ANGEL volunteers. Uh, the ANGELs are an important part of this uh, program. They would respond to a station house to uh, do uh, an initial evaluation of somebody who came to a station house to, to uh, ask for assistance. Um, to, in order to apply for the ANGEL uh, position, there's going to be a website or a link on the Erie County Health Department website that should be up in a day or two. Uh, the hours of operation of the program are going to be between 7 a.m. and 2 p.m. Monday through Friday. 
This REAP initiative is just a natural extension of law enforcement trying to help with this opioid epidemic that we're having in Erie County. Uh, law enforcement already stepped up to the plate and is using Narcan on a near daily basis in Erie County, and this is just a natural extension of that. Uh, the participating agencies are as follows. Tonawanda, Evans, Orchard Park, NFTA, Amherst, Buffalo PD, Lancaster, Erie County Sheriff's Department, Hamburg PD, Niagara Falls from Niagara County, uh, East Aurora, and Depew PD. And then when do you think it will be started? Uh, we believe that uh, the program should be operational in about two months. And as Dr. Burstein said, very, very important part is of this program is getting that crisis service hotline up and running. Uh, apparently the funding is not in place for it, but we expect uh, the funding to be approved um, soon. Thank you. I'd also like to recognize Chris Cummings from the Erie County Medical Center and their participation in the program as well. My purpose in being here is really just twofold. Number one, to thank the leadership of County Executive Mark Polenkar, as along with our Erie County Health Commissioner, Gail Burstein. This is such a massive problem affecting Western New York that it really is an all hands on deck approach. And thanks to the leadership of both the County Executive and the Health Commissioner, we are without a doubt going to be in a better place than we would have been without their participation. And this program is just one step in what will undoubtedly be additional um, developments and additional announcements as we go forward with the work of the task force. But really by far the second purpose of my being here is to commend the men and women in blue who you see represented behind me by the greatest leadership we have had in Western York law enforcement in my almost 30 years as a federal prosecutor. The job of law enforcement has never been more difficult. All of the oaths that the police departments have taken include the phrase protect and serve. And that job, frankly, because of the opioid epidemic, is becoming a greater challenge than ever before. We all have familiarity and perform the job of arresting and detaining the protection prong very, very well. The service prong is what this particular program is going to address. It's just one of any number of additional steps that the law enforcement community is considering and deploying. You heard on the lack zone being another step, which again is saving lives or serving the community. It's also protecting the public from the <laughs> risks of overdoses. So thanks only, uh, not only to the political leadership and the medical community and Dr. Burstein, but the law enforcement community from both Erie and Niagara counties, specifically Niagara Falls and Niagara County and Chief Del Porto, but all the wonderful leaders that you see behind me, which represent the largest towns and communities in Erie County. Thank you very much. Uh, just in conclusion, I, like Bill, want to thank each and every one of the, the men who are here today and the men and women of local law enforcement who are uh, basically on the front lines of this crisis, who are administering Narcan, who are unfortunately seeing the same individuals sometimes, uh, not just in the week, but in the day, uh, saving lives. And they know that they can only do it to a point. They need help. That's why we're asking for the angels to come out and volunteer. The link is up now. It is uh, up live at uh, uh, erie.gov backslash health uh, and more information on the actual program and who can qualify to be an angel uh, will be available at the website. Uh, I can't remember, remember being in a room with this many police chiefs uh, and they're all united because they understand that this is a crisis that you can't solve on your own. When I was in Washington, D.C. for the National Opiate Task Force, we were commended as a region for being ahead of the curve, so to speak. But we're ahead of the curve because we're also one of the areas where the opiate epidemic seems to be hitting us hard. Uh, so we will continue to work on this. Uh, we know there's no one answer to this to this problem. That's why the rest of the task force will be meeting again for the remainder of the, t uh, the day. 
Uh, this is just one tool that we're putting in our tool belt and uh, working together as a community between law enforcement and the members of the, the angels who will be helping us. Uh, we will save lives in a lot of ways.